You ready? Georges, my brother. How are you, sir? I'm 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 doing good, man. Doing great. It's it's been a wild last uh 50 plus days, but it's uh it's been solid, man. I can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah. Definitely has brought some real perspective, you know, to my life for sure. Yeah. So you just say, is it been 50 days you've been in there? Man, uh, September 7th would make two months. So tomorrow's September 1st. So wow. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's 55. Yeah. I mean, let's get right into it. What do you What do you think about when you say perspective? That's interesting. What has it done for your perspective? Uh you know, just how you know grateful I can be to you know be in a situation where. Yeah, we have to wear a mask around here, but I get tested every day. I get my meals provided, you know, and then with all like social injustice and with COVID going on, like I wake up and and put an orange thing in an orange thing for a living. Like, you know, it, it <laughs> has humbled me. I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's like, it's the truth. It's like, damn, I really get to do what I love while all this is going on in the world and people really can't even see their family. You know what I mean? Crazy. It really does. It really does. It's been... I mean, we've had a we've had an interesting <laughs> it's been interesting for us because we're, you know, we're like the wild, wild west out here. So but I've we've had the same experience with perspective, just like I literally got a tattoo right here. It's it's a debt. It's a skeleton. I got it last night. It's a skeleton holding up a, uh, a sign that says, who cares? <laughs> and, it, and the and the idea is like all this shit that we really care about while we're alive, all this societal pressure and the things we actually like are giving a lot of our time and stressing us out none of that it's all trivial when 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 judgment day comes and and you know you're at the end of the line and you realize like a lot of that most of that stuff didn't matter so i'm on the same wave bro it's been a perspective shifting time for sure yeah no it's it's been wild and like another thing i could say on this like when you're not playing in front of fans, like, and you can just, you're literally like in your own world though. And it sounds like real, like selfish to say, cause people are out in the real world, like struggling, but it's like, I'm not listening to no negativity that, you know, it's coming my way. Like people who, who think they can buy tickets to just scream at you on the sidelines. Like there's none of that. Like, I want to say like, you're in a good mental place, but obviously dudes like miss their family, their kids, girlfriends, right. wives, but it just, like today I literally was thinking about it, you know, before we had talked and uh, I was like, I'm not letting like any bad, vi like having bad vibes in your life is a choice. And I'm not like letting any of that. I love that. My way at I love that. Why do so when, when you talk about not playing in front of people, would you, would you say it's like as a player? I mean, I, I'm sure you get this question a lot. You're talking about it in a positive way, like finding the bright side in it overall do you feel like you're having a better experience or it's just because it's so different it's like hard to compare what, what how would you rate it playing and you know obviously when the nba playoffs like human beings are human beings when you have thousands and thousands of people cheering you on or cheering against you that energy is felt you're in the same building it could it could give you boosts of energy that you didn't even know you had you know when when you got so many people behind you pulling in one direction so you lose that element. That was like kind of one of the main things I wanted to ask you is just like, you know, and the way you phrased it last is just kind of like, yo, I see the bright side in it. What's your overall, like, how's it been? Uh, it, it's definitely different, man, because, you know, and obviously, you know, there's like natural energy, right? Like you can just feel like course, course. how momentum shifts like in a game. But the crazy part is like they try to pump in like, you know, fake, like fake fan noise. And like, it's just not the same. You know, like, you, <laughs> yeah. you don't really feel like pressured or like rushed or anything like that. Cause it goes to show you like fans in an arena really can like sway the outcome of a game with, you know, their energy and different things like that. For sure. Obviously in the playoffs, like the magnitude of the moment, you know what you're getting into. So that's a lot different, but I think that's why you see a lot of these like performances, like, you know, Guys are walking out there like, all right, it's, I don't have any, nobody's really watching me because you don't really think about you're on TV while you're playing. You just think you're playing. And then you go from there. And I think guys are having these crazy performances because they don't have to think about, you know, if I miss, what are the fans going to be yelling? Because that's just not a thing. Right. Just unbothered. It feels like some guys are just unbothered out there. <laughs> They're balling. Yeah. What up? And like, you know, it's like, if you're, if you're a, like, you've played sports, like, 
when you're in a zone, yeah, yeah, like you're in, you're in a zone, like, and these are professional athletes. So like some of the most incredible humans there are. And when they're locked in, it's like, nah, I, I will hit, you know, 10 threes or, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's that's just, an interesting point. Yeah. That's an interesting point. I feel like you are seeing some of those performances though, where it's just, I mean, regardless now you're, you're, what, what do you have? One game left in this series? You guys up three, two? Three two in the no, series. Three, three, game seven. Oh, game, game seven. seven. Tomorrow. Sheesh. Ooh, how are we feeling? How's the morale? The morale is solid. We were up uh three one. Uh yeah. so you know, right. We had a few chances at a closeout game, and now right. it's game seven. Here we go. So Here we go. Yeah, you go home. Here I wanted to uh I wanted to just touch on it before we got going any further. You're a dude who uh I've wanted to have on the podcast. It sucks we have to, this is the first. I wanted to have you in person, obviously, but we will when we will. But uh, people, for the people who are, you know, not familiar with Georgia's, Georgia's from the same area I'm from. Where exactly in Mass? Methuen, so like Lawrence, Lowell. Yep, yep. So right in the same, 45 minutes from where I grew up. Um, and I, I say that, I include that only because it's just like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a small, part, you know, where everyone grows up kind of feels small. But like, these are... These are places that you don't necessarily, when you have NBA dreams or MLB dreams uh, coming from these places, really coming from anywhere, it's it's such a far cry. But coming from those types of neighborhoods and those places and, and climbing that mountain, getting to the NBA, uh, for you, you know, it's, it's, it's really fucking incredible to see what you've done. Because, I, I mean, I got familiar with you when you were at Iowa State. I didn't know you locally in the area. Um, but, you know, you can say, and you've said, I've saw other podcasts you speak on. I mean, you're not the, you're not the typical NBA guy. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're kind of in between sized, you know, there's all these factors and you've talked about it a bunch, but like when I wanted, when I thought about this conversation, like it's really, it's, it's where I wanted to start because it's, it's an example of just like, no matter what really the factors are and it, and it could be sports it could be you know what you want to do in your life it doesn't have to be occupational but these dreams and these aspirations and you know not necessarily having the best hands of cards but finding a way to get there and to excel and to do it i mean you're a guy i think of right away when i think of guys who just figured out a fucking way like me and music i had no fucking idea what i'm doing you know like you're one of the first guys that pops in my head and i wanted to kind of I, I want you to touch on it kind of from your perspective but you've known that you've been stacked against those odds being you know maybe in between size for positions in the nba and people doubting or you know and just you navigating that um i'd love for you to just touch on it uh and it's, it also you could touch on the role that the the doubts played because i think that that's an interesting it's an interesting tidbit i mean for me it was a huge part of the music thing i remember it's weird because now when I look back, I'm like, that's kind of a weird source of uh, motivation, you know, like even feeding into the negativity. But I remember kids in my hometown and like, it was so far fetched when I started rapping and making music. I really like a big part of it was like, something inside me knew I could, but I was so pushed by those people like laughing when I left the room thinking, fuck that dude's, you know. He thinks he's going to be a rap, you know, like that type of shit. No, nah, definitely. You know, obviously, you know, you never know where life's going to take you. Um, but obviously I grew up loving playing basketball. And I think the ultimate dream is obviously to play in the NBA. Right. You know, like you said, I, I, I'm not the tallest. I'm not the strongest. I don't have the best body and I'm not the fastest. Um, but, you know, that's what kind of motivated me to prove to people like, you know, why? why can't this be me? Cause you know, when you grow up where we've grown up, like we didn't really have any, you didn't have a rapper or, you know what I mean? Someone to look up to, to be like, Oh, that's who I want to be like where these other areas have like NBA players or musicians where they can be like, Oh, I want to be like such. So it's like, right. you really got to create your path and every obstacle that comes in your way. You really got to look at it as like, this is just another hump in the road. That is like a part of my journey. Right. And I think I was just told no so many times as a young player, it's like being cut from a team or you're never going to play division one. You're never going to get a scholarship. You're, once you get a scholarship, you're not going to make it to the NBA. It's like, all right, now what obstacles next? I got to keep pushing forward. Like, and it's crazy to say it, it may not come off and sound the best, but I had a trainer that told me like, whenever things get hard, just continue to keep eating shit. 
keep eating shit because at the end of the tunnel, like it's all going to be worth it. So whenever like shit would get hard and I think to myself, like, damn, like, cause everybody has those days. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, man, I don't really want to be doing this. Am I good enough to do this? And like, those are the days where you have like real growth, like the days where it's easy to wake up and it's like, Oh, I'm vibing. I'm making shots or I'm making beats or, mm-hmm. you know I mean, this sounded good. Those are the, everybody can have those days, but it's like the real growth comes where it's like, fuck, like I'm in the studio Spot till on. five, six in the morning and I can't get this hook right. Or, you know what I mean? I can't make this jumper or make this move. You're spot and on. And those are when you actually show like real growth. And I think that's why not everyone is successful because everybody doesn't want to have to go through that shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and the people that are willing to are the special ones. I mean, obviously you're going to have your, you know, small percentage that are just naturally gifted and have right. it and like burn out. But it's like most of society just doesn't want to get to that point where I, I hate saying it, but like uncomfortable and, you know, struggle to reach what they really, cause they, they really don't want it that bad. Cause you know what it is. Like if you want something bad enough, it's going to be like, nah, I'm, I'm fucking getting it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that's why me and you get along so well because it's like it's a respect thing because it's like we both know how hard it is to come out of where we come yeah. from to be successful and yet we see like the drive and grind like to get us to where we want to be. Yeah, it's a fraternity when you come <laughs> I feel like it's like an automatic. It's that one thing you as you have success in anything and you get older and you kind of realize, you know, you realize what it takes might not even necessarily be your cup of tea, per se. You know what I mean? You don't even necessarily have to be a fan or a consumer of what that person does. But when you see the success, you know what comes with it. And you know underneath whatever the persona or whatever it may be, when it comes down to it and the door was closed, they fucking did the work. You know, or there's something special about them. There's something, you know what I mean? So it's kind of that I look at guys, and that's why I try to do with this podcast is just... Everyone has their own version of this same story where it's like, yeah, bro, like <laughs> I have those days where I doubt what I'm doing. I have, you know, like there's there's really not one person I've ever had a conversation with who doesn't kind of say the same version of that where it's like if you don't if you don't like if you never have those days where you have to push and knock the door like if you have to push your way through the fucking crowd where it's a crowd your mind's cr- your mind's crowded, the gym's crowded, whatever it may be, you know, I have I feel like a lot of those points in my life like some made me a way better version of myself kind of exactly what you just said where I was kind of I look back at an older version of me that hadn't really been through some of the stuff yet uh, as a younger kid and I it's like almost like a different person you know I didn't have those I didn't have that experience and I had I didn't have honestly it's like a wisdom that you get through experience you know and uh obviously the the journey that you've been on has, has been a long how old are you now 27 or 27 years young. I'm catching you, man. I'm catching I'm up. Catching you, I don't bro. know if you ever will, but we'll be close. <laughs> You've been a, like, well, just, let's go back to a little bit of our story. You've been to what, the Mike Stud era. You were. I was heavily involved. You were you were on stage probably four or five times, I think, I, I can think of, right? Maybe more. Maybe more. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Can't remember those nights. A lot of good times. <laughs> Some of the best nights. Can't remember, Steve. Uh, but we had a uh, man the first time in Iowa State. Uh, where, where? What is it? Was Des Moines? Des Moines. We're, we're Des Moines. We're in Des Moines. That was. That was. That was, that was one like that. That doesn't. I've played so many fucking shows in so many cities. Like you know, just a lot of them blur together. When I think back now from this perspective, a, a lot of like I could just put like tours together and like oh I remember certain aspects. I remember that night fucking clear as day. Not the exact details, but I just, that night like stands out as like a legendary, (laughs) a legendary just, it wasn't even that it was like, it wasn't even that it was so crazy. We just went to some local bars, but we just had a fucking blast. (laughs) It was was a wild time. And I think the the dope part, we just did normal people yeah, stuff yeah. you know what I mean it, it wasn't anything like over the top or trying to be secluded like literally you were hanging out with all your fans that were there I mean and then you just get to know how people are right like Jerry's bossing people around you know what I mean <laughs> Blue's getting lost somewhere Kilmer's like running off you see him on top of a bar and you just like you catch people's and Foley's literally like saying two words in the corner just vibing not much has changed uh, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just good energy. You know what I mean? And I think the older you get, you realize like what you're. I don't want to say attracted to, but what like yeah. you yeah. come across with, you're like, oh, I I can relate to that, and it's just good energy. But nah, that I thought I was doing it my sophomore year at Iowa State, and then you know we came across path, and I was like, okay, <laughs> there's a whole like level to this. Uh, there's, you know? le- there's levels to it, man. And I, and I and, and bro, like uh, sheesh, I, what what year was that? Was that twenty? 20- 15 dog that was 2014 2014 Ooh, that was the most you were right in the thick of it that was like when we were at our peak ratchet level (laughs) we were just so fresh touring's borings comes out and you're like dang next time he comes to town i gotta get him to do that you know that was the whole culture man that was the whole culture we uh it's the interesting part about what you were saying uh about like flow state when you were talking about you know, the guys who, you know, these are the best guys in the world playing. And when there's, there's no, when you eliminate the distractions, that is a crowd. Like you talk about these guys getting in that flow state. That's kind of, I I relate to that so much, but I was, that's kind of what, when I think about the music career and like touring, when you bring up touring's boring, like we weren't thinking about shit. You know what I mean? Like we, you know, it was small scale, but like we kind of came out of nowhere with it. The whole reason, even up till this, to, up to this right now like currently anytime anything negative when i look back it was it was a little bit of like caring too much you know what i mean being a little precious about it and like when we did touring's boring or like any of the first ideas and all of our best ideas to this day it's the ones you just like they're flow state ideas it's just something cool that happens organically and people i feel like people are attracted you know people are attracted to that energy they might not even know it's subconscious but they're like I could tell how real and how organic this this is. So it's X, you know, it's X, it's way more interesting and captivating, you know? Uh, and, and when I think of touring's boring, bro, like we were just doing that as a fucking joke, you know? And it ended up, it really did kind of, it really did parlay into a TV show. That was how we got the TV show. And it parlayed into our shit actually getting bigger. Like people came to the shows like you said, like, yo, I got to get on Torrance Boring. Like, we got to do some shit and get on Torrance Boring. So it kind of made this whole brand, you know, crazy. You, you, you're a Torrance Boring uh, alumni. You've been on there. Just just sprinkling just in, man. not being too aggressive. Just, you know, just just, just in the cut. Light, light work, light work. Exactly. Yo, I, the, the best part, though, is y'all, I mean, obviously, I know as you as you get older, you I mean, you try to, change up like you know how you attack life and, yeah, and yeah. how you do things but like the way like you i don't know how i'm gonna try to explain it but you guys lived life with no rules right so fun was like at a maximum right mm-hmm. but you all had like morals whereas like if someone crossed the line it was like nah you know what i mean right. like we're not doing that right. right but like we're not rejecting anybody's like vibe or what they're trying to do if it's different Mm -hmm. but like we're we're not crossing this line but fun there's gonna be no rules and fun's gonna be at a maximum (laughs) and when i was i was i would say i was like 21 when we first met i didn't really know that like it could really get to that point because you know (laughs) your whole life you're you're always following rules like there's always consequences it's like literally i saw and got to be a part of like some of the (laughs) and it's and it was just like, yo, like that's the vibe that I'm trying to be around, and that's why anytime you came to town, I was like, yes, say yeah. less. I'm in there, or you know what I mean. Fact. Or if I'm in LA, I'm in, I'm in, a, I'm at a concert there. It's just whatever. It's just good energy, good people, and like you said, you know what I mean. Being in that zone and not caring. But the problem is, is people get lost, lost up in that. And I mean, obviously, I've followed you know your podcast and what you talk about. Right. You know what. The shit you read and how you're not not trying you know what I right. mean? that's the one thing that i you know i i thought deeply and i was like that makes so much sense because literally the work that you've done before like the moment comes like you just gotta let yourself go and be you because whatever's about to happen is about to happen i love what you just said i love what you just said because because a lot of people a lot of people like message me and like want to understand the don't try tattoo um and what i mean by it and what you just said is, is a part of my answer most of the time. It's about trusting in what you've done, trusting in what, what life has given you and what you've taken from life, you know, what you've get, gotten from life. 
And when the moment, you know, when the time comes, it's not time to try anymore. It's just time to do and be, you know? And uh, like, it was a, it's a Bukowski thing. I don't know if you're a Charles Bukowski guy, but on his tombstone, uh, he put the words, don't try. And a, a big, that kind of, that the undertone of the message from him was he had like a very hard life, uh, f like was ridiculed and had, you know, just just a tough life, had tough social problems, like, you know, didn't have a lot of a lot of friends and a lot of connections. He felt like things didn't go his way. He's a very talented writer, but no one, everyone just said no his entire life. I think he worked at the post office and his work got blew the fuck up and got huge as soon as he stopped trying. He gave up. He was like he was like 65. He just wrote just because he needed to write, you know? And it went to the fucking moon as soon as he stopped trying. And he was the one that knew that. Like, he knew that he, like, you know, you're the only one who really knows the intentions behind the things you do. And he, he was like, yo, that's literally when I stopped trying. Like, I didn't, I was no longer trying to make money off or trying to become successful as a writer. I was just exercising my need to write. And I, when I heard that, I was just like, fuck, man. <laughs> you know, and I connected with it so much because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of it is how, how this music shit happened. I, I wasn't trying to just kind of, it was really just going, going with the flow, you know, and uh, something, a message I need, like all my tattoos are just reminders to me. So that's why I, I like, I like, like they all face me. They're upside down. A lot of them just so I could be reminded, you know, any athlete knows what I'm talking about, but it's, you know, when you're out on on the court, I'm sure you can resonate with that. When you're in flow and you're not thinking about things, you're not trying to do that. You're just kind of reacting and all that work, uh, you know, in the entire life. You've built that body of work. So it's ready. It's time to go. We'll be right back with You Never Know, You Know What I Mean, right after this urination break. Let's cut the shit. Now, my whole life, I thought to myself, why are there not products to pamper my package? But recently, I have been enlightened, thanks to our friends at Manscaped. Now, people always look at me when they see my dick and balls. They're like, John, how do you get such a tight shave? How do you get no rashes, no nicks on your dick and balls? And I tell all those guys the same thing, Manscaped. Now, Manscaped sent me a nice little care package of the Lawn Mower 3.0, hands down the best razor for your downstairs. They sent me some ball deodorant and they sent me some ball toner. Ever since then, my shit has been on point. On fleek even. We have a special offer for you. If you go to manscaped.com, use promo code YNK, you're gonna get 20% off and free shipping. So go to manscaped.com today, save your dick and balls, use promo code YNK, you get 20% off and free shipping. Hand to gold, this is something you need. Gentlemen, this is something you need. Now, people are always asking me some crazy stuff, but the most common thing people ask me is, John, what are you listening to? Well, when I go on long walks around the neighborhood, I'm usually bumping a little T-Swift, maybe some Britney Spears, maybe some One Direction, maybe all three at the same damn time. But when I'm listening to them, I use my earbuds from Raycon. John Kilmer here with a fantastic new product. Now, I love my Raycon earbuds for several reasons. One, you're not breaking the bank. They are less than half the price of their competitors. I'm gonna say that one more time so it sinks in. Half the price of their competitors. They got great bass. They, they have six hours of battery life. More importantly, they're founded by celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, and most importantly, Ray J. Not only was he knocking sex tapes out of the park, his earbuds are dope too. So go to buyraycon.com slash YNK, you're gonna get 15% off your earbuds. That's buyraycon.com slash YNK, 15% off these wireless earbud headphones. Get over there and get it done. Yo, yo quick, quick question though. I want you to like think back to you being an athlete yeah, yeah. and like, obviously I know you're like a competitive dude. Like, do you think you could do a like bubble situation here? Like, like say you like hum a fastball by someone's face. Right. But you're staying in the same hotel. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, 
it's a whole different vibe. And I was thinking about it because me and Donovan Mitchell mm-hmm. were talking about it. Like so many crazy things have come about like this pandemic. Like we were talking about like Jack Harlow, right? Mm-hmm. Like has a hit, like what's popping, but doesn't even get to like perform have it in concert. I know. You know what I mean? I know. I know. Where it's like, yo, how do you like realistically like deal with it? I mean, like you put out, you know, I mean, two songs like mm-hmm. and you don't even get to like display them in front of fans you know what i mean i don't know when's the next time you're gonna do like a concert but i mean like Mm -hmm. that's on hold bro and and that like that's one thing where i have sympathy for artists is like because that that really makes guys you know what i mean like you have that one song you get to do a concert and then fucking it just yeah man like to be completely honest man i'm 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 a bit of an outlier with the whole like we we've been talking about this a bunch the music industry has been turned kind of upside down through this because I think the typical percentage that most artists are receiving on on actual record royalties, which is like the income that your music generates um, through stream, through purchase, through syncs, whatever, right? You're getting around 15% or 18% of that income. So, you know, that could still be a, that could be a lot if you're doing massive numbers, but for a lot of people, for a lot of artists, if they try two or three or four different campaigns and spend some money on you and then those records don't necessarily catch, there's like literally 35, 50 more artists they already have their eyes on or they're already signed that have already have a song. Like there's like 5,000 songs getting dropped a day. You know what I mean? So a lot of guys, it is gonna be a very interesting time. I have my eye on the music industry. But I really like it's really interesting timing for us because I was I was I'm kind of in the middle of of doing one. <laughs> I haven't I haven't actually inked the deal. And I'm like, thank fucking God, because we can't tour until 2022. Probably most likely like bigger shows aren't going to be. I don't think they're going to be greenlit until 2022. That's what I would guess. It's interesting because the timing of this man, like very ironic to me very ironic i've held out for i've held out i don't believe in coincidences I've, I've literally held out for eight years and when i'm about to do a deal a lot of this deal was dependent on like the touring aspect of it and I, this happens and i'm just like you know in my universe it's very ironic and i'm like mm. so you know i'm really i really like i don't even i don't even know how we got here in this conversation i think you had a question but as far as like surviving uh, as a mu- you know, as a musician and what this pandemic has done, like I started it with, and I'll go back to, I'm a bit of an outlier, one, because of the independent factor, but two, we do other business stuff. I, I like doing that. That shit, stay, that shit makes this all fun to me. You know what I mean? If I was just doing music and every day, like every, you know, like artists can get consumed by that and it can get, you know, it just can get weird. Like personally, it keeps the music fresh because I do the other stuff. You know what I mean? I, I don't have a burnt out vibe. It's actually really fun when I get in there. I have fun when I make music, you know? But it's not like an everyday all the time thing that most artists, it's what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So when you take away the, the chance to go out and fucking kill shows, when Jack Harlow has a hit song, he's probably been, you know, he's a young kid, but when, when you get your first hit, it's a special time. Like, I've had a platinum song, but it wasn't a hit song. It got platinum over four four years, you know? Like, I can't even relate to what that feels like to just have a fucking smash, you know what I mean? Like, an undisputed smash. As much as he can't be complaining and, like, he's got to be overall very excited and happy, it is a little bit of a raining on the parade situation where, like, he could really be parading around, getting the fucking bag, but also growing the song. As big as the song is... It just helps to go fucking crush it everywhere. And people are like, yo, that's the shit. You know what I mean? And it just it helps elevate the song and the song success. But that's what people don't like understand. It's like, yeah, I should be happy oh. that like everything is going well. But you know, like in this industry, like when you're hot, like you gotta be like, like I need all, you know what I mean? Just like with an athlete. Totally, it's like, I don't know how long these checks are gonna be coming totally. in. So when, I, the worst thing I hate is when people get on the internet and are like, I can't believe such and such left to go for this opportunity. It's like, yeah, I'm going to take the money and then go figure out how else we're going to make it work after that. I talk because about, yeah, I only have a small window. 
I talk about sports fans on, on this a, a decent amount. It's fucking really weird to me the way like sports fans and the way they the concept of their relationship to the players is confusing to me. There's like this weird entitlement and like the place I'm from, the basketball team pays you millions of dollars. So like I get to tell you how to live and think like, you know what I mean? Like there, there's this under the, like, there's no way as a grown adult that you should feel the need or feel actually like, feel like you can say that to another grown person that you don't really know. You know, like you have no idea what they're going through personally, but they have this like entitlement, like, oh, I hate the way he acts, get rid of him. Oh, you know, like it's almost like the, there's a, they feel like there, there's leverage because you're paid a lot of money to do what you do that they could say what they want. Like you don't even have feelings or, you know, you don't have a real life human being, like just existence issues. Like it's a, Everyone on earth knows those existence issues. Like when you get to a certain level in life or, you know, as things happen to you, you know, life has its challenges no matter what the fuck you do or where you are. Like it's actually part of being alive. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's literally etched in like everybody, everyone has these paths that they need to go on and there's suffering and there's pain. And no matter what it might look like from someone else's perspective, Everyone individually is going through that at certain phases. And it's hard for me to understand people that like, it's weird. It's especially with athletes. I went on a rant about this on a podcast a while ago. It's just like, I don't, I don't get it, you know? And, and, and it's hard for me to relate to. I understand the privilege they, f that there's a privilege they feel because, you know, you guys signed up for this, you're public figures and you, you know, you get, you're, you're so well paid uh, and, and from their perspective that, you know, it's their right. It's their like privilege to be able to like kind of look at y'all as commodities versus human beings. You know, <laughs> it feels like they're looking at you guys. They're like genuinely think you guys are commodities and expendable and exchangeable, you know, at a certain point, like you just kind of have that awakening, like for them to even feel like they can even weigh in on my life and say that, like, I know how far off or misguided they are. So when do, you know when does it just completely like stop mattering yo but that's the tough part is because you have to walk a fine line right because you still want to have like fan engagement yeah, and yeah. feel like people feel like you care but you really can't give a fuck but the problem is is some athletes they're like super turned off by when you know what i mean after they've been drilled by the media said they ain't this their name dragged through the mud and they're like all right i'm not taking pictures anymore Yep. And, you know what I mean? And that's how they cope with it. Cause it's like, if I can't really rock with you on that level, why am I going to open myself up? For, what am I opening myself up for? But then, then again, then someone's like, well, he's an asshole. And then he's, and it just gets worse. So you have to like, I don't, I don't know how else to put this, but like not give a fuck, but kind of give a fuck. I you know what saying. I mean? Where it's like, you know how you wake up in the morning and like, if you got to go do, you know, something that you don't really want to do, you got to put on that, you know, I don't want to say you do it because you're just like you all the fucking time. So there's <laughs> never a time that you're like, not you. But I mean, you got to go put on that fake smile or yeah. you know, do shit you don't want to have to do. Right, right. But I think it gets to a point where like you hit an all time low as like an athlete, right? And then you see your name being like, get him the F out of here. And then you're just like, you get to a point where you're like, rock bottom is like, You've been there for long enough. Like, there's not a lower point where you're just like, you know what? F it. I'm going to do this. And whatever comes of it, it can't be worse than where I'm at right now. Right, right. And it honestly happened to me, uh, you know, my after like my rookie year where it's like, yeah, like I got all this fame, but I wasn't playing. So it was like, why is he even here? He sucks. This, that, and the other. And I just felt like such like a loser. And like, and my whole life, that's I've so, never that's so interesting. felt like this much of a loser. And I was just like, you know what? Like, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out doing it my way. Like, at least I'm going to go out swinging with, like, some dignity. So it was literally, dope. I think I was probably, like, 20, 23 years old. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to do things my way. And if people don't like me, then they weren't meant to be around me. If they do, then, you know what I mean? Right. Fuck it. That's the vibe that, you know, I'm going to be around. That's really cool. So you're in, the, you're in the NBA. You achieve a dream. You're in the NBA. And... You just said, I felt like a fucking loser, given the circumstances of how it played out. And I think that's so fucking, 
That's so interesting, though, and that 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 aids the point we were just making about you know people not un- people ne- needing to kind of understand that the human element of this, like they probably never in a million years would think that. You know what I mean? That you're actually going through a fucking low point. You're in the NBA. They're looking at you as privileged or whatever. You know, however their outlook is. It's a, it's a really interesting, like, it's a great little nutshell example of what we were just saying. You're in, you know, you achieved a dream coming from a place that no one really does it. No one really does it from there, bro. Like, how many, how many from Mass? Not many. Man, all kids that I grew up with, like, there's, you know, like, three or four dudes that, like, I played, like, on the same AAU team. Yeah. The only ones who are, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you do have a little... You have that little group. Was it Wayne? Is Wayne still in the league? Selden? Uh, he yeah, he was just in the league. It was Wayne Selden, like Nerlens Noel is on uh, yeah. the Thunder. Noah Vonleys on the uh, Denver Nuggets. Michael Carter Williams is on the Orlando Magic, and we all like yeah yeah play, like grew up and played together. And it's like that little that little group. Yeah, and yeah. The, the the back to the back to the fan things. It's just they they feel like they don't know your journey and they never will because they would have to go through something like as crazy as right, what we're right. going through. But they honestly feel like, and and you know, cause like, I mean, you started off in your dorm room, you know, doing mm-hmm. this and it's money can't be a band aid, you know, for all like they think, Oh, well he can't have emotional stress cause he has all this money. But realistically, you know, when it comes down to it, like at some point, you know, You've made more money than you ever made in your life, right? Mm-hmm. But there's still things that you feel that money can't fucking fix. Totally. And for people to say, just because you have money, like that should fix all these things. It, like, it will never make sense to me because after a while, my the way I look at money or $10 doesn't hold the same value the way you look at $10. So there's no way that it can heal how I feel. Right. And, right. and once people can understand that, like I'm more than just a jersey number. You know what I mean? Like I have a heart, a brain, a soul. You know what I mean? They I just, love that. But they don't see that because that's all we portray on TV. You know what I mean? Right. That's a really fucking, uh, that's really cool. That's really well said. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the bubble. What the fuck is going on in there? What's it like? Ooh. I mean, this is, it's actually a good time for, you know what I mean, for us to talk about that. Uh, you know, it was, it was going great, man. I, I think when we first started, you know, the NBA players, when we all got on calls, it was really like, hey, like, let's go down there and finish the season. And, you know, obviously there were supposed to be percentage cuts. And, you know, a lot of us were thinking, hey, like, let's go play. Like, as a fraternity, a lot of the older guys were like, hey, let's go play, try to get a champion. But more importantly, like, get these young guys who are on their first contracts, like, their money because – we know that we're good with, you know, the big contracts that we've had in the previous years, right. but these young guys are going to need this money. And, you know, the, the guys that did have bigger contracts would be like, Hey, we're donating our contract for, you know, being down here to change. And I, I think as a collective group, we all like stood together and felt like we could really make some change coming down here with using our platform. And obviously, you know, like a couple of days ago, uh, we had a boycott mm-hmm. and, um, uh, you know, I think, I mean, you, you know how it is. We didn't want, you know, our momentum to stop. And it felt like, you know, we were kind of getting tuned out. Um, and then what had happened in Kenosha, yeah. you know, Wisconsin, with Jacob Blake, uh, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks kind of felt as if, you know, that yeah. they yeah. really needed to be the stamp on that. And, and I don't disagree with them. I mean, obviously, none of us knew, right? Like, I'm on a day off. I'm out at the pool, you know what I mean, trying to get my mind off basketball. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then you're there with every team, right? It's kind of weird, right? You play them in a game, and then you're at the pool, like, doing recovery. And you know what I mean? And you see all them. And someone was like, from the Raptors, was like, hey, Milwaukee isn't coming out. There's five minutes left on the clock. And I'm like, are they not about to play? They're like, well, I heard someone say something about it. And the dude in Toronto was like, I don't think we're going to play Boston tomorrow either. And then I'm looking at the Denver Nuggets like, are we about to play? I mean, we can't play. You know what I mean? And, like, we all got to stick together in this. And um, I think we we got the owners on the phone and, you know, we got them all to open up 
each arena for for people to come in and vote because you know there's some precincts that you know are closed due to what, everything that's going on yeah and there's a bunch of other things with like police reform that we've got them you know to step up and and do and i think it's it's pretty progressive that is progressive uh, that's just one aspect of it you know i mean the next aspect is is basketball and hooping and you know being away from your family and fucking yeah. only having a handful of things to do like i don't even know what's going on in the real world because like yeah i don't know ignorance is a real thing but like i don't know how many much how many more covid cases there are because this is my life a hotel room and you know i mean mickey mouse and, and disney down here in <laughs> sheesh man did you ever in a i mean obviously never in a million years but like dude I got to talk a little more about the uh, the element of like, you know, as a sports fan and just as a guy who knows you guys, um, it's been pretty fucking dope to watch. Like the fact that NBA basketball players are able, you know, willing and able and actually successfully, you know, able to come together and actually put some form of political reform or some things in the right direction, you know, it's interesting. I, it's like kind of, I feel like we're going to look back on this year and these types of things as like a lot of it's history, you know what I mean? And it's, it's been interesting. I'd say you guys were probably the most active, you know, it, I, by far actively kind of putting these things at the forefront. And I, I want to say, was that like the first, was that the first forfeit? Uh, what is, I want to say, I, did I see it on sports center? Was it the first forfeit ever? Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. Yeah um yeah it, it's uh yeah no it, it was crazy man i mean it was it was real emotional too because yeah. i mean you know how it is you know me and you will never experience what it's like to be a a black man yeah. and and have to go what they've gone through but we've had friends you know what i mean Absolutely. And like as as uh, as i'm hurt as as someone on my team who's had to experience that is hurting and you care for them you kind of feel the same way. And it's yeah. like, dang, how can I be better? How can I learn? How can I, you know, continue to help you out to make this world a better place? And like, like we talked about our journey is you just got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing because I mean, and I hear you talk about it or tweet about it all the time, but there's really ignorant people. And I heard you say on your podcast, but you're like, I will never understand how one being could see another being not being equal because of, yeah. how they look and, and and people don't really understand that like they really like you really wake up and really think that you're better than someone because the color of your skin and it's like it it baffles me and and hopefully we'll be able to see it through we'll probably be old and gray but fuck i mean we're just people can just be happy generally happy for anybody else but then it goes back to like what we talked about earlier like i think just some people are so miserable in their own skin that they just have to take down someone else yeah. to make them feel like they actually are good enough. Yeah, and and in that, in that, uh, that that uh, that was like an excerpt of a conversation we had about it. And and part of that, part of the message was like understanding that for those people to really believe that, they've really been through some terrible programming. Like they obviously, you know, you don't pick your parents, you don't pick where you're born you don't you know you don't pick the situations that you find yourself in a lot of times growing up but for them to be programmed in such a way that they actually believe that it's like you know you have to go I try to force myself to go back to that like hey that like I'm very very lucky and privileged to like be raised by people who taught me taught me these things and yes you know you can make Obviously, you don't have to believe what your parents believe. And, you know, there's plenty of people who have, might have racist parents that, you know, find out as young adults that they can think for themselves and they can create, you know, they don't necessarily align with how their parents feel. But, you know, even just the compassion, like as far as how you say we might be old and gray, I mean, I think it's going to take an incredible level of compassion to to like... Because think about it, when you, if two people really disagree and everyone's just arguing at each other, like it's what I see on Twitter every day. Like I try, I, I try to stay engaged because I want to be informed, but I also know how draining it is. And it's it, 
like what it does to my energy sometimes when I see all these terrible things and how we're in such disagreement with over over things that shouldn't be disagreed disagreed upon, you know. But I think it's gonna take an unbelievable le- amount of compassion to like go all the way back to the roots of like it's gonna take sitting down and like I, I just don't I don't know, you know. Like you said, it's a it's a day by day, <laughs> one step at a time journey, and you try to make the right. We try to help in any way we can, but for people right now, it feels like the trend is going the polar opposite way everyone's just arguing and weaponizing everything that happens against the other side and you know it's very it's sad to see um i'm not sure i don't have the answers i wish i had the answer as far as how or how it could be fixed and just taken down to like i just want to write i would just want to write and wrong morality scale to be fairly in tune that's all i'm asking like we don't we can totally disagree on a lot of things but just like the essence of what's right and what's wrong you know and you feel like most people should have it, but I feel like these times have just brought out the worst of it. You know what I mean? People are so, so, also election, it's a very pivotal time, you know? But it's bringing out, it's bringing out the worst in those arguments and it's it's tough to watch, honestly. It's scary. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, I, I really had like a come to Jesus with, with myself and it, I don't wanna try to change anybody's mind Right. that is set in ways it's more or less i just want to help help kids realize that one you can be whatever you want to be mm-hmm. and just treat people the right way no matter if they're white purple black brown green yellow right like and the way i i feel like what made me i don't want to say not see color because i don't know the proper way to you know if that offends anybody yeah. but the way I feel like I treat everybody equal was like sports. Yep. I yep. mean, like how many baseball teams have you played on where it's been like, there's been a Spanish person, mm-hmm. there's been a Chinese person, there's been an Asian person, there's been a black person where, where it's just like, we don't, we don't see the differences in looks because we're all speaking the same language. Like we're all speaking like sports. We're all speaking like baseball. We're all speaking bass. Like, right. and that's the, that's the beauty of it. Like, I may not go home and have the same views as you, but for that time being, like we're intertwined because we have that same thing that we're like in tuned with. And at the end of the day, the one thing every person should be in tuned with is that we are all fucking human. And and that should be the one thing that intertwines us. And I mean, it, like you said, some days I'm like, man, we're getting somewhere. And other days I'm like, we're so far off. And like we talked about before, I'm in the bubble where like, I can only go off what I see on Twitter or what pops up first on my MSNBC when I open up my, you know, my Safari on, on my laptop. Right, right. And it's like, I also, I kind of feel like a shithead cause it's like, all this is going on and I'm here, you know, living this crazy, you know what I mean? Like, like literally in a bubble, like people talk about you're living in your own world in a bubble. Like, that's what I'm really fucking doing. Like, I don't know, like, what's going on. I haven't driven a car in 50 plus days. I haven't, you know what I mean, gone and used real money. Like, we have these, like, little, I don't know, what are these called? These little, like, Mickey Mickey Mouse bands where, like, literally just charge everything. It's like college like, all mean, over like, again, bro. Yeah, it's like, and I feel terrible about it, but it's like, yeah, yeah there's no amount of money in the world like that, you know what I mean, that can do anything for you in here because we're stuck in the bubble, like, whether if you have a hundred million or a million or a thousand, it doesn't do anything for you in here because everything is just one. That's really interesting. You guys got like, yeah, you're you're in the same fucking, you know, you're in the same facility as LeBron and the guys who have made, you know, the hundreds of millions of dollars and these long careers. There's there's a level of luxury um, that some of those guys are at where their life is just so unbelievably regimented and carved out. And their vibe is set to maximum level because they have all these things in place. They're in routine and they have the money and the access to whatever they want. So that type of shit puts you in a fucking vibe. Like for me with music, like when I'm in, when I'm on a certain mood, you know, where I like the way things are going and everything's in flow and I have everything, the abundance of whatever I need, you know, and we're in a nice place with a nice view. Like I know the mood, I'm ready to make music. I'm excited. Like that's a lot of times I'm most excited to create ideas, you know? And that's an energy that's, that, that, you know, 
is acquired is the right way of putting it. It's like acquired through this lifestyle that you've established. And it's interesting. It's completely taken off the board. You guys are all exactly on a level playing field to a certain extent, right? Like it's, it's more or less yeah, completely crazy to think about, you know, cause those guys, I wonder if those guys have felt, you know, like it, when you take them out of that routine, you take them out of that luxury and you're kind of back on like college campus, you know? But you know, what's actually been the surprising thing. Like we have like an area where we can all hang out like as players and all the dudes that are like high level, like, you know, you'd consider like upper echelon, yeah, like yeah. they've been like super like down to earth, like super good dudes. Like I'll use Kyle Lowry as an example, right? Mm -hmm. Like, known as like a pit bull in this league right point guard for yep. the toronto raptors like known as just being like a dude that's like you know gritty tough from philly like you know what i mean could rub you the wrong way but like just super great dude like welcoming like he likes to golf i like to golf you know just like super humble and like super outgoing you know what i mean and like then you have guys like you know Kawhi leonard that you know what i mean like you haven't heard say more than a couple words, but like can open up behind closed doors. You know what I mean? And it's yeah, just yeah. like, it's been super cool. And like the even playing field is, I think that's as a, as someone that has, you know, come from, you know what I mean? Nothing. And then made it to a point where people think you're, you know, a celebrity or a, a D list celebrity for me. <laughs> um, same, same. You just want to be treated like, treated like a, a normal, uh, a normal person you know what i mean because that's really all that has ever mattered like yeah that, that shit is always great it's enhanced my life but um i'm a normal dude yeah i go to applebee's <laughs> i love that reference i bet i bet a lot of the fans listening don't even get that reference uh yeah, yeah. he's an og steve right here yeah i've totally feel you bro it's uh has there been um beefs that have like or tension that's crossed is it is it like a, is it tough uh being in such close quarters with the guys you're competing at right now like competing against huh. yo low-key uh it hasn't because i don't think anybody's taken it there because uh i think we all realize you right. know some yeah. things are just bigger than you know what i mean like it's a game we get paid really well like we may hate each other but there's no need for you to start like right having right. brawls in the hotel lobby but one I was nervous about was the the Luca Marcus Morris one where he like socked him in the face. Yeah, he didn't like that one. And I was like, that's one of those dudes where I'm like, I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. if the, how that's gonna shake out. He's a uh, <laughs> he's like you know what I mean. You're, you're you're walking around here and like you don't have security around you like it's your hotel. Like you may walk from your team's meal room to your room and like another team may be coming from practice and you just yeah yeah. It, yeah it's i mean i can't imagine that happening because there'd be some repercussions like severe ones right right but uh it's crazy, it's crazy. i don't know it's it's weird because it's like i'm never uh, it, it'd be like if you were in the bubble with like huh, hoodie allen you know what I, mean? <laughs> uh, I would body slam his ass night one <laughs> that's uh, that, that's what i that's what i mean man it's like you're never escaping like the the industry you mm -hmm. know what i mean where it's like i can't go home and like vibe out with my people like i'm like someone got on me the other day they were like you're always on your phone and i'm like to be honest with you it's the only thing that gives me a break from wake from looking up and seeing someone that's in like the basketball industry it's like i can be watching cartoons and be like engulfed and yeah, like yeah, yeah. wrapped up in that and not have to think about basketball because as soon as i pick up my head and it's like friggin uh, Milwaukee Bucks. It's like God. Like I can't yeah. escape yeah. like the basketball ever. Crazy. Are you? Uh, you're saying you're on your phone. What? What's the main? What are, what are you doing to get by in there? Golf. You said is golf your main hobby? You picking up? Yeah, golf. Um, there's bowling. I've actually, you know, re really just. Uh, I've started my own like podcast, but I've been like I've listening seen. to other people ones. I've seen. You got to have me on. Man, I'm I'm just trying to catch up, man. <laughs> hey, you're already doing well, man. What what is the what's the minivan thing? Is it called minivan? Or, or yeah, is yeah, that yeah, your yeah. nickname? The, dri the driving dish, but the one I just started is called uh, cruise control. But uh, the minivan is actually funny because I when I wasn't playing originally, like in my first part, 
we were up like 20 against the Brooklyn Nets and I got in and had a chance to like go up and dunk it. And I like literally like rim graze, like laid it in and everybody was like geeking on me in the locker room. And I was, and they were like, why didn't you dunk it? And I was like, listen, like, I know you guys are all Ferrari engines. I'm more like a minivan. I need a couple laps around the block before I hit. I love that. I love that. Yeah. We got to send you a T though. Send me the cruise, uh, the cruise sizes. I'll send out a care package out Come there. Come on, bro. Of course. I'm going to I got to send you a bunch of our shit too. Stevenson Ranch. Yeah, Stevenson Ranch is, is that still in or what? Yeah, of course. Running it all up. I got we got a bunch of new shit. I'll send you I'll send you a big box. I plan right, I plan I'm gonna send it to the bubble. I plan on you guys being in there next week. Say less. I'm in here. My brother. Um I appreciate you doing this. We have to do one in person when we get when we're, when we're capable. Technically we can. We have a guy that can come that can uh, like just do on site. I mean the same shit you're getting, you know, like just tested. So we could do, we could do shit in person. But I'd love to have you on more. I want to have you on uh, and kind of go through your story a little bit more when it's, when the time's right. Are you gonna be? Uh, are you gonna be? You you come out to California a decent amount, right? right. Off season. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be out there all fall, man. Amazing. So you'll be sick of me by the time I get out there. Oh fuck, we're not even gonna be here. Oh fuck, I didn't even tell you. Yeah, we're moving, bro. We're gonna move. I'm gonna, so I'm moving to Nashville, but I'm I'm taking this. I want to take a long way. So I want to like I'd like to go. I just looked at the, this as like an opportunity. Like we've lived in LA for five, almost six years, and we want we've been talking about Nashville, but I'd never. I don't think I'll ever have another window in my life where like I can go live in a bunch of places. Like. The world's kind of on pause, you know, like I have a lot of places I like to like live for a little while. So we're going to go. Uh, one of them makes sense because we're doing some stuff with Johnny. He lives in Scottsdale, Johnny Manziel. Um, yeah. um, we want to yeah. do Scottsdale, probably Montana. I want to do like a lake house in Montana. I want to make Colorado, um, you know, maybe one other and then we'll land in Nashville. But yeah, man, it's just that time. I want to. I want to go like experience some new shit and, and and it's really fucking easy for us to like move our studio around. Like it's really easy. So like it doesn't, we're not tied to one place. I just want to take advantage of it. Like I feel like we'll never really, this is the window to do it. And I was thinking on it for a while and we were thinking on it for a while and it just, it just felt right. So we pulled the trigger. We're, we're, we're going to be moving out of here in like a month and then uh, we'll go to Scottsdale for like two months or so. And then we'll just start rocking. Hey, uh, you could you can meet me in Old Town. I could I could I could make an appearance down in Scottsdale. I might need you. You gotta pull up to the crib. We're getting a crazy spot in Scottsdale. You gotta pull up. Oh, for sure. It's been you too long, my guy. When's the last time we linked in person? It's been a little while. Man, the last time I saw you was Miami, but like right before Christmas, and then before that. Dang man, it's it's been it's been uh no I think I stopped by the 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 new house I stopped by the new house that summer, yeah so yeah it's been at least a couple of years since we got she after got yo I I got the craziest story right so my agent has been on my ass like yo I need you to send me one of your jerseys da 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 and he lives in L A right and he somehow ended up at your house at a after after hours party right and sends me a picture he was like. You asshole. He was like, <laughs> Mike got a Mike has a fucking jersey before I do. Like you're fucking This is how it goes, bro. He was he wasn't with us shooting it. He wasn't with us at Iowa State fucking ransacking ransacking the bars. <laughs> we fucking just ransacked those places. Uh, oh man. Tour bus was a movie. But anyway, that that's for another podcast. That that's a whole other podcast, whole different genre of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> my dog i appreciate you bro i appreciate you and i'm appreciate you guys much love man for real i'm real 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 happy for you sir i'm fucking uh it's great to watch honestly it's you're gonna do great things but i'm just i'm happy for you enjoy the moment sir even this fucked up weird bubble shit you're gonna remember this forever you know so it's just like enjoy the moments the moment, sure. i know you are i know you are sir my dog. Cheers. Oh, we'll talk soon. We'll talk soon. And when you get out of there, uh, let's organize a link up. Maybe it's Scottsdale. Say less. Say less. All right, my dog. I appreciate you, man. Thanks.
Later, bro. Later.